In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Newton's first law of motion, the difference between correlation and causation, and how these two things can help you find more gold faster and more efficiently. G'day, welcome to Mad Scientist Prospecting. My name is Stuart Chignall, and I like to call myself the Mad Scientist Prospector because a lot of the things that I do and the way I go about doing them is a little crazy. Whereas, I'm known as a mad scientist because I get so frustrated and angry that so many people out there get the science so, so wrong. It's that attitude that I, I really wish you would rein in a little bit because you're not the one who has to deal with the hate mail. It's me that it all comes to. Hey, you're the one who keeps venturing into this space. If it's too much for you, just back away. Oh. I've been putting this video off for a long time because it was something I felt we needed to do together. And due to the coronavirus and lockdown, that wasn't really possible. But today I decided to hell with it. So, on with the show. Newton's first law of motion states that an object's motion will remain unchanged unless a force makes it change. So if an object is sitting still, it will not move unless a force comes along and makes it move. If an object is moving, it'll continue moving unless a force comes along and makes it either speed up or slow down or whatever. And this is incredibly important when it comes to working out how gold particles behave in a river or stream, because it's understanding how Newton's law of motion works and understanding that it's forces making the gold move or making the gold stop is the key to predicting where the gold is going to end up. Previously on this channel, when I have tried to use different examples, whether they be experimental setups or analogies or whatever, I've had various people say, oh yeah, but that's different with gold, or that's different in a river, or that's different whatever. The thing about these laws, the thing is that we don't call Newton's work on motion, Newton's theories of motion, we call it Newton's laws of motion, because on every conceivable scale, with every material, in every situation, where they have been investigated, they've been found to hold true. Which is why we call them laws, and not theories. And that is all everywhere, all across the board, until you get to the quantum level, where it becomes a whole different ball game. But that is not a subject for this channel. <laughs> to go in to discuss this further, we're gonna look at me pushing this car along the road. And we're gonna start talking about the difference between correlation and causation. If I'm pushing this car along the road and then I stop, we can see here, oop, the cart has stopped moving. Now, many people would say it stopped moving because you stopped pushing it. And they would be wrong. The fact that you stopped pushing it is correlated with the fact that it stopped moving, but it is not the cause of why it stopped moving. Newton's first law of motion states that an object will maintain its motion unless a force makes it change its motion. The fact that he stopped pushing the cart and took away the force that he was exerting on the object, the cart, didn't make it stop. Because you can't make something stop by taking away a force. You can only make something stop by exerting a force. The fact that I stopped pushing it, and the fact that it stopped moving, those two things are correlated. They happened basically at the same time. They happened in correlation. But me stopping pushing wasn't the cause of the cart stopping moving. Rather, what stopped the cart from moving was friction between the bearings in the wheels and the, between the, the, the rim of the wheels, or the tires of the wheels, and the road surface. That's what actively stopped the cart from moving. A bunch of you are going to come on here and in the comments section you're going to start saying that I'm playing with semantics, that I'm playing word games, and it doesn't really matter whether it's the friction that really stopped the cart or whether it was because he stopped pushing the cart. But the thing is, if you think that, you're wrong. Oh. Look, he's right. It isn't just how you view things that determines the cause versus you know, the correlation. And to help you see that, I've got another example. And watch what happens when I stop pushing it. 
Yeah. <laughs> it started moving back the other way. So let's connect the angle of the camera and suddenly you can see that I was on a hill. And as soon as I stopped pushing, or in this case, pulling the cart along the road, it very quickly slowed down and then gradually started rolling the other way and eventually picked up, ste picked up steam and ran off down the hill. Now, do you see here that the cart coming to a stop and then taking off in the other direction was correlated with me stopping pulling it? But me stopping pulling it didn't cause it to take off in the other direction. What caused it to take off in the other direction was gravity. And do you see that it's exactly the same as with the first example? When I stopped pushing it, there was a correlation with it stopping to move. But what caused it to stop was another force acting on it. And in that case, it was friction. Whereas in you know, the second example, what caused it to change direction and take off down the hill was gravity. I'm, and I'm gonna get mad because I know someone's gonna get into the comments after he said this and they're gonna say, oh, that's so stupid relating to how a cart behaves on a road is completely different to how a goal behaves. No. Newton's laws of motions, people, it's, it, it applies everywhere. It's exactly the same. And this is one of the things that gets me is that people will use that to say, scientists like us are completely disconnected from the real world, that we don't have any practical understanding of how things work. And it couldn't be further from the truth. One of, in fact, probably the main job of science is to develop models, mental tools that allow us to accurately predict what is going to happen so we have to do less work. And that's and this is the thing, an accurate understanding of the physics involved in how gold behaves will help you find gold faster and more efficiently. That's the that's the point. It's a practical application of the science. It's meant to make your life easier. Now this is why I bang on and on about the limitations of the low pressure model. I, I, long after my colleague has given up in frustration and rage. Now in creeks and rivers and your sluice, it is exactly the same thing. The low pressure model is exactly the same as believing that when you stop pushing things, they stop moving. People believe that it's being pushed downstream by the current, by the force of the current, and that when the gold gets to one of these areas which they call low pressure zones or sheltered areas, that by taking away the force of the current, that's what causes the gold to stop. But it's just not true. Now, in a creek or a river or sluice, the, there's two forces that will cause gold to stop. Friction and gravity. Now, when friction is the primary dominant force, you will tend to see gold following a pattern that is predicted by the so-called low pressure model. But when friction and gravity are working in concert, or when gravity is the dominant force, you get a whole series of behaviors from the gold which are completely different. And because they're so completely different, if you're using the low pressure model to find gold, you won't find that gold. Well, I hope you found this useful. If, on the other hand, you think I'm a raving loony and you completely disagree with everything I've said, I am perfectly willing to debate this in the comments section. And if there was something I said that needed clarification, ask a question, be happy to answer it. And the people who think I'm a raving loony will also be happy to answer that question, probably by starting off by telling you how wrong I am. That is cool. Debate is awesome because lively discussions lead to further insights. It's good stuff. I'm sorry I haven't been around much lately. I thought I was gonna be able to get a whole stack of videos done during the lockdown process, especially these theoretical videos while, cause, while we shut away from the creeks. It's just, there's been a bunch of other pressures on me and I just haven't been able to. Although if you have been missing me, I have been getting a few woodworking videos done, so you could pop over to my woodworking channel, Chestnut Nag, and, and check that out. In the meantime, hopefully I'll see you in the next video, and if you're subscribed and you've hit the bell notification, you won't miss out on it. Catch you guys later. Far out your short. And what, what happened ah! when I... You're stopped. using my trolley. ...falling the other way, and eventually picked up, the, picked up steam and ran off down the hill. Oh! <laughs> You're not supposed to be using my things. I asked you first. When? Ages ago, a couple of weeks. I don't remember. Well, it's not my fault.
Show your cross face. Show your cross face. It's so cute. Hang on. What are you doing with him? We're supposed to be in isolation, woman. What, what the hell's going on? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs>